Hi, I'm Scott Newton, the CEO of Audio Advice. At Audio Advice, we are huge fans of immersive home theater, so we've created this series of videos on how to improve your home theater, including everything from tweaking your picture to improving the acoustics in your room. In this particular video, I'm going to give you our top five tips for improving audio in your home theater or media room. Check out the link in the description for our entire playlist of improvement videos. While you can always upgrade a part of your home theater to get an even better performance, I thought it would be fun to go over some things you can do to improve your audio experience that only take a little bit of time and knowledge. Just like in the top five tips for improving video, I'm following the 80-20 rule. Most of these tips could have a small book written on them to take fine tuning as far as possible. These tips will get you most of the value with just 20% of the work. And if you have a favorite tip you do not see listed here, we would love to hear from you. Please post your comments and suggestions for us to see. The first set of tips are on nailing the location of some important speakers in your system. Hopefully you have used our article on home theater speaker layouts or our free 3D home theater design tool to find the right places to put your home theater speakers. This tip is about making sure your main in-room speakers are properly set up and positioned correctly. We all normally have a sweet spot where we like to sit in our theater that 99% of the time should be dead center of the screen. Your left and right speakers should be symmetrical to the primary seating position. For home theater, we like them to be spread between 45 and 60 degrees from your primary seat. You want each of them to be the exact same distance from your ears with the exact same amount of toe-in, which means the angle the speaker is aimed toward the center seat. But if you have some flexibility, testing various positions a foot or two in all directions can substantially improve performance. Make sure your home theater receiver or processor is set to playback just in stereo and turn off any room EQ. Find a favorite recording with a single voice that also has some acoustic bass if possible. A good one to use is I Can See Clearly Now from the Holly Cole Trio. You'll want to use a tape measure to confirm your starting point is good, so measure from the back of your speaker to the rear wall on the rear corners of each speaker. Make sure both speakers are equidistant from the back wall and symmetrical to the seating position. So once you have your speaker symmetrical, now what I want you to do is to try moving your speakers a little bit farther out into the room. We're going to move them about a foot. We'll move both speakers out, listen to the same track, see how it sounds, and then we'll move it back a little bit and we're going to work forward and backwards until it's sort of locked in. Once it is, we're going to do the same thing and move right to left and find that spot where everything locks in perfectly. Once you have it, now we need to decide toe-in. And so this is straightforward. Toe-in means that we're towing it in like this towards the main listening position. What you want to do is work the toe-in right up to the point where the center voice and imaging is perfect right in the middle and no further so that it can sound great for all the other seats. And you'll just play with it a little bit and you'll know it when you're in your main listening position and it totally locks in. Once you've set this position, use your tape measure to get both speakers exactly the same. If your speakers have spikes, make sure the spikes are set up so the speaker is level with no wobble. You want them firmly grounded. Once you're happy with your setup, you will rerun the audio calibration again on your home theater system, which I show you how to do later in this video. These steps should make your sound more open and your surround sound field seem even bigger and more cohesive. Now, let's move on to subwoofer setup. Getting your subwoofer properly set up can make a huge difference in the way your home theater sounds. You can go from bass that is boomy with no definition to deep bass where you can hear what type of muffler the cars are using in a chase scene. This does take some adjusting, measuring, and listening to get your sub in the right spot and calibrated correctly for the room. You'll then experiment with various crossover points in the delay of the subwoofer to get the best blend between it and your main speakers. This is so important to get right that I did an entire video on subwoofer placement and one on subwoofer calibration. If you really want to nail it, go watch those videos starting with the placement video and ending with the calibration and they will walk you step by step through exactly what to do. You'll find that after moving your sub a little bit and making a few adjustments in your setup, you'll notice your bass is much tighter, defined, and blends far better with your main speakers. 
The right audio settings and calibration can make a tremendous difference in getting great surround sound. There are two parts to this tip. The first step is quick and simple, but many people miss it in the initial setup of their system. Many devices will default to outputting just plain old stereo as the company thinks the box will be hooked up to just TV speakers and they want the buyer to hear all the sound. You want to go to the setup menu of each of your sources. Go to the audio section and make 100% sure it is set to output surround sound. If you see a choice between PCM and Bitstream, choose Bitstream. If you see stereo or Dolby, choose Dolby, or it might be Dolby Surround. There are still a pretty good number of television shows and movies that are produced in either just normal stereo or even in some cases mono. Most modern home theater receivers have the ability to convert this type of signal into a more immersive audio experience and make it easier to understand the dialogue at the same time. To make certain you have this set up correctly, you normally have to go into each of your active inputs on your home theater receiver. All right, to make sure you've got this set up correctly, you'll go into your receiver's menu. In this case, I'm in an Anthem. You'll go into Input Setup and then choose each of your inputs. And let's just say I click on Blu-ray first. And all of them will have something where you get down that says, for instance, in this case, mode preset for stereo, and you'll see it's none now, which means it's going to play stereo. But what you'll want to do is choose your favorite surround sound format. Most people now are going with Dolby Surround. So you'll see I've got both multi-channel source and stereo set to Dolby Surround here. And then you would go back out and do the same thing for your next uh, input. You'll see in this case they are set to last use and I can change that back down to Dolby Surround just like I did in the prior instance. Now, when a stereo encoded television series comes on, your receiver will give you a better surround experience and move dialogue into the center speaker. The Dolby surround playback of stereo has gotten so good that even most hardcore audiophiles like myself set it as our default in our theaters. Now, you know for sure you are going to get the best surround sound possible. Now let's look at how to do a proper audio calibration. You would not believe how many home theaters I visit where the customers asked us to find ways to improve the sound and I find out the previous installer from another company did not even run any type of audio calibration. This one is probably one of the most important steps you can do to assure you are getting the best sound. It will require a little bit of time and for some home theater receivers it is more automatic than others. But in all cases it is so well worth it. If you've never calibrated your home theater, many modern ones will walk you through the process with an on-screen display. It's important to note some automatic systems get the distances wrong, so please check those with a tape measure and readjust them manually after your calibration if they are off. We have separate videos on calibration in general and even more detailed ones on Dirac and Arc Genesis, which are all linked in the description. It's important you do the speaker setup and subwoofer setup before you run the calibration. And remember, if your subwoofer has its own calibration feature, run that first. Also, for almost all calibration systems, turn off any external sounds in the room like HVAC systems or ice makers, point the microphone upward and not at the screen, and finally rerun the calibration if you've added or changed any furniture in the room. After a proper audio calibration, everything about the sound will improve. One thing to note is that good calibration systems will get your room sounding closer to what the content producers intended. So dialogue will be clearer, as will soundtracks and imaging. However, oftentimes people will feel that there's not enough bass after they calibrate. This is usually because you have become used to hearing a lot of a particular bass frequency that resonates in your room, which creates the perception of great bass. After the calibration, that bass peak in your room is cut back down to match the other frequencies. My suggestion is to live with what the calibration software produces for a few days. Then if you still feel like the bass is too low for you, you can either go into the calibration software and slightly increase the bass in the curve or turn up the gain on your subwoofer. This will keep the balance in the room so your entire system sounds better, but also bring up the bass to whatever level you prefer. Now let's move on to center channel fine tuning. There's no question that the most important speaker in your home theater system is your center channel. If you cannot understand the dialogue in a movie or television show, you will just not have an enjoyable experience. I've seen many situations where the way a center speaker is placed in a cabinet or the wall construction is mounted to can cause resonances that color the sound coming out. These resonances hide the tiny little details in the sound of the emotions the performer is putting into the scene. 
If you've ever sat in your room and felt like you had to keep turning up the volume just so you could understand the dialogue while everyone else is yelling to turn it down, this tip is for you. We have an entire companion video linked below that goes over everything in detail, but I will quickly tell you here the key things to try. First, you want to experiment with the placement of your center channel. If your center channel is in a cabinet like this one, don't let it be back as far as this or you're going to hear the sound like this. We've actually created the test track out in the playlist where you can actually listen to it and hear it. But I want to show you in general, you're going to want to pull this forward and you'll listen to the test track that we've created in the playlist. Get it forward enough where the speakers are outside of the cabinet as you see here and you won't get the resonance that'll come from being in the cabinet like that. After you've placed it in the best sounding spot, you then want to find the best frequency for your room and speakers to cross over your center channel to your subwoofer. That frequency is where the deeper bass tones are routed to your subwoofer. First, go into your audio settings for your home theater receiver and make sure you can make fine adjustments. If your choice is just large or small, then 99% of the time set it to small, which usually defaults to 80 hertz. If you can change the frequency crossover, try changing from 80 hertz to 90 hertz and listen again. Keep doing this until you get to 120 hertz. In some rare cases, lowering the crossover may be better, so you can also try going down to as low as 60 hertz. If you have cabinet or wall resonance, the voices will usually clear up around 90 to 100 hertz. After these adjustments, you should hear that dialogue in general sounds much more effortless and you'll be able to hear more subtle emotions and you should be able to hear dialogue clearer at lower volume levels as well. The next tip is about acoustic treatment. Sound reflecting around your room can cause an echo effect that makes it difficult to hear the small details in the movie or television soundtrack. You do not want a totally dead room, but too much reflection can make it very hard to even understand the dialogue. The first thing you want to do is to utilize your natural room elements to improve acoustics. For instance, using carpet instead of a hard surface floor and using soft treatments like home theater chairs, drapes, and cushions also help. If you really want to improve the sound of your room, the next step generally is to add acoustic panels. It does not take that many panels and they usually add to the aesthetics of the room as well. Here are a few key 80-20 tips for acoustic treatment. The goal is to find the large flat surfaces in your room where the sound bounces off and makes it to your ears just after the main sound wave coming directly from your speakers. Without using a tool like ours to do the calculations, the easiest way to find the first reflection points where you generally want acoustic panels is using the mirror method. This trick requires two people. One of you will sit in your main chair while the other moves across the right and left side walls with a mirror held at the same level off of the floor as your main speakers. Anywhere you can see the speakers from your chair in the mirror is a point on the wall that should be treated. Ideally, you would put acoustic panels at least in these first reflection points. For a test, you can try hanging up a heavy blanket or tapestry on the wall. In some rooms, a large flat wall at the back of the room can also cause a problem. Try treating the middle section or corners the same way you did the side reflections to see if it helps. If you really want to get this right, give us a call at audiovice.com or stop by one of our stores and we can help you map out a mixture of absorptive and diffusive paneling for your room. We have a great selection at Audio Advice to cover pretty much every scenario. If you do have reflection problems and follow these tips, you should find the dialogue much easier to understand and experience a much more precise surround sound field around you. My next tip is about finding and eliminating noises your room might be making. Nothing is more distracting than hearing a light fixture or HVAC vent buzz when a long, low, deep bass effect hits. It totally ruins the scene in a movie. Finding the buzzing light or vent is a lot harder than you may think. What causes the buzzing sound or rattle is a very specific frequency that excites the object. Once you find where the rattle or buzz is coming from, you can normally use some blue tack to fix it. You can usually just place some of the blue tack in between the HVAC vent or recessed can trim ring in the ceiling to fix the buzz. If it is a lightweight door on a cabinet, you might need a rubber bumper. These are simple and inexpensive fixes. We've even linked what you need in the description. To help you out, we have a video link below where we slowly go across the spectrum of tones where we normally find rattles. I suggest for this test, you put your home theater system in all channel stereo. This will be an audio mode where every speaker gets a full signal. It may be called party mode or all channel music or something similar. Play the test sweep 
over until you hear a rattle or buzz. You will notice the sweep shows the frequency on screen. At the end of the sweep video, we have longer tracks of most of the frequencies to give you more time to find that annoying rattle. If you have multiple light fixtures or HVAC vents in the ceiling, you might have to get on a ladder to get close enough to detect which fixture is causing the problem. Or you might just find putting blue tact on everything in your ceiling is faster than trying to find the exact one. Once you have fixed any buzzing or rattling, be sure to set your system back to normal surround mode. Now you can enjoy these loud, rumbling scenes and only hear what is coming from your fine-tuned subwoofer. I've added one bonus tip to this list that is also in our top five tips for improving home theater video. This tip is on how to set lip sync perfectly and crosses both audio and video tips. Every display device in any video processor in the signal path will add delay. This will cause what you are hearing to be out of sync with what you're seeing. It drives me crazy to see people's lips either behind or ahead of the speech. The adjustment for this with most components is called lip sync. This adjustment is usually found in the settings of your surround sound receiver or processor. Most of them let you adjust each input individually. So if you have both the Roku and Apple TV, for instance, you'll want to set the lip sync in your receiver for each of those inputs. We find that lip sync can be hard to adjust without great visual cues. So we created a lip sync companion video on YouTube specifically designed to help you easily lock in the perfect lip sync setting. You can see what it looks like here, but you'll want to use the companion video so you can take your time and nail it. Once you've used that video, you will wonder how you lived without having perfect sync before and it will drive you nuts whenever it's out of sync at a friend's house. I hope these tips help you take your audio from good to great. To get the latest home theater and audio content, be sure to like this video and subscribe. If you have a favorite tip or suggestion you did not hear listed here, feel free to post it in the comments for everyone's benefit. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our companion videos, including our top five tips for improving home theater video and top seven most common home theater mistakes. If you have any questions on these tips or looking to upgrade your theater, give us a call or chat with us at audiovice.com or stop by one of our award-winning showrooms. Also, check out our free home theater design tool, how-to videos, inspiration gallery, and home theater showcase videos at audiovice.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.